Have you ever wondered why some people go out of the way to help others, even at a cost to themselves? Is it purely selfless or is there more to it? Let's embark a journey into the fascinating world of altruism, a concept that has intrigued psychologists, biologists and philosophers alike for centuries. Altruism, in its simplest form, is the act of helping others without seeking any personal gain or benefit. It's that warm feeling you get when you lend a hand to a stranger, or the satisfaction of knowing that your actions have made someone else's day a little bit brighter. Just a moment. Before we delve deeper, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you're finding this content valuable. Now, where were we? Altruism is a fundamental aspect of human behavior, a thread that weaves the fabric of our societies, binding us together in shared empathy and compassion. But, but as we delve deeper into the nature of altruism, the waters become a tad murkier. There are who argue that altruism is not as selfless as it appears on the surface. Evolutionary biologists, for instance, propose that altruism might be a survival strategy where helping others increases the chances of our own survival and that of our genes. Social psychologists, on the other hand, suggest that altruism might be driven by a for social recognition or personal satisfaction. And then there are the philosophers who argue that true altruism in its purest form is an act of selflessness, an act driven by a genuine concern for the welfare of others without any expectation of reward or recognition. They contend that altruism is an inherent part of our human nature, a testament to our capacity for empathy, kindness and compassion. These varying perspectives on altruism raise intriguing questions about the nature of human behaviour and the motivations that drive us to act in the interests of others. They challenge us to question our own actions and motivations, to delve deeper into the complex interplay between self-interest and selflessness. So does this mean altruism is not as selfless as it appears on the surface? Stick around as we delve deeper. Scientific research has taken an interest in understanding the roots of altruism and kindness. Unraveling the mysteries of altruism has been a fascinating journey for scholars. Various studies have been conducted with results that are as diverse as they are intriguing. One such study that stands out is by Daniel Batson, who proposed the empathy-altruism hypothesis. According to Batson, when we empathize with another's situation, we are motivated to help them, not out of self-interest, but purely out of concern for their well-being. Picture this. You come across a person struggling with heavy bags. You feel their strain, understand their difficulty, and offer to help. That, according to Batson, is empathy-driven altruism in action. Quite a heartwarming notion, isn't it? But of course, there's always another side to the coin. The debate whether true altruism, untinged by any form of self-interest exists or not, has been a subject of much discussion. Some researchers argue that even the most selfless act of kindness has an underlying selfish motive. It could be to feel good about oneself, to be seen in a positive light, or even to alleviate the discomfort of seeing someone else in distress. Take the example of donating to charity. Is it a purely altruistic act, or does the warm glow we feel afterwards, knowing we have done something good, make it a self-serving act too? Quite the conundrum, isn't it? But let's not get too caught up in the debate. Whether altruism is driven by empathy, self-interest, or a mix of both, the fact remains that acts of kindness make the world a better place. And isn't that what truly matters? These studies, these discussions, they push us to introspect, to question, to understand the nuances of human behavior. They remind us that altruism in its myriad forms is an integral part of who we are as a species. These studies definitely give us food for thought, don't they? Did you know that our biology might have a say in how altruistic we are? Let's dive in and explore this fascinating perspective. It's a compelling thought, isn't it? That our genes, those tiny segments of DNA, might influence how likely we are to extend a helping hand to a stranger or sacrifice our time for the benefit of someone else. Genetics play a crucial role in forming our physical characteristics and health. But could they also be shaping our propensity for altruistic behavior? Studies suggest that they just might. 
In particular, research on identical twins who share the same genetic makeup provides intriguing insights. These studies have found that identical twins are more likely to exhibit similar levels of altruism compared to fraternal twins. This suggests a genetic component to our tendency to help others. But our genes aren't the whole story. Our hormones also play a part. Enter oxytocin and vasopressin, two hormones that have been linked to social behaviours. Oxytocin, often dubbed the love hormone, is known to foster trust and bonding. It's released during acts of kindness, and studies have shown that an increase in oxytocin can make us more generous and empathetic. Similarly, vasopressin, another social hormone, has been linked to altruistic behavior. Research has shown that in certain animals, higher levels of vasopressin lead to more pro-social behaviors. Could the same be true for us humans? It's a tantalizing question. Of course, it's important to remember that our genes and hormones don't dictate our actions. They may predispose us towards certain behaviors, but they don't determine them. We have the power to choose kindness, to act altruistically, regardless of our biological inclinations. So, next time you feel an urge to help someone out, remember it might just be your biology nudging you in that direction. But ultimately, the choice to act is yours. It seems our genes might be more generous than we thought. Scene script. Psychology, too, has an interesting take on altruism and kindness. Let's dive into the depths of our minds and understand how our upbringing, social conditioning, and personality traits shape our altruistic behavior. The roots of altruism, it seems, are deeply intertwined with our developmental years. A nurturing environment where kindness and empathy are encouraged often cultivates a propensity for altruistic behavior. Children who witness acts of kindness are more likely to replicate them, suggesting that altruism can be, in part, learned behavior. Social conditioning, too, plays a pivotal role. Society's norms and values subtly guide our actions. Communities that value cooperation and mutual aid often foster individuals with a higher inclination towards altruism. Meanwhile, personality traits such as empathy and openness are also linked to altruistic tendencies. Empathetic individuals, for instance, are more likely to engage in acts of kindness as they can understand and share the feelings of others. But altruism isn't just about serving others. It also serves us. Yes, being kind and altruistic has psychological benefits. Studies suggest a helper's high, a state of euphoria followed by a longer period of calm experienced after performing an act of kindness. Altruism can also boost our self-esteem as it reaffirms our abilities and value to the community. It fosters social connections, reducing feelings of loneliness and isolation. Furthermore, engaging in altruistic behavior can provide a sense of purpose and fulfillment, contributing to our overall happiness and well-being. There's also the concept of reciprocal altruism, the idea that we help others with the subconscious expectation of future aid. This doesn't diminish the act's value, but rather highlights our inherent desire for social cohesion and mutual support. In essence, our psychological landscape significantly influences our propensity for altruism. It's a complex interplay of learned behaviors, societal norms, and intrinsic personality traits that guide our acts of kindness. And these acts, in return, work their magic on our minds, enhancing our happiness, self-worth, and social connections. Clearly, our mind plays a significant role in our acts of kindness. Altruism isn't just about individuals. It has far-reaching impacts on society as well. When we act with kindness, we are not merely responding to an internal urge. We are also contributing to the fabric of society. Altruism, when practiced universally, can become a powerful force that binds communities together, fostering unity and harmony. In essence, it acts as a social adhesive, creating a sense of belonging and mutual trust among individuals. Consider, for instance, the concept of reciprocal altruism. This is the notion that when we do good for others, we can reasonably expect good to be returned to us. It's not a tit-for-tat exchange, but rather an underlying understanding that kindness begets kindness. This principle is fundamental in maintaining social bonds and promoting cooperation among individuals. Imagine a world where everyone acted out of pure self-interest, where altruism was absent. It would be a world characterized by distrust, conflict, and disconnection. Now, 
Contrast that with a society where altruism is the norm, where individuals actively look out for each other's welfare. Such a society would be marked by unity, cooperation and mutual respect. The difference is stark. Reciprocal altruism also plays a crucial role in promoting moral and ethical norms within a society. When we observe others acting altruistically, we are more likely to adopt similar behaviours ourselves. This sets a positive precedent, encouraging a cycle of kindness and compassion that can permeate an entire community. Moreover, altruistic behaviours can also lead to collective resilience in times of adversity. When individuals band together to help each other out during crises, it not only mitigates the impact of the crisis, but also strengthens the community's capacity to cope with future challenges. In conclusion, altruism isn't just about individual acts of kindness, it's a societal phenomenon with far-reaching implications. It contributes to social cohesion, promotes ethical norms and fosters collective resilience. So, the next time you perform an act of kindness, remember you're not just benefiting another individual, you're reinforcing the social fabric that holds us all together. So, kindness isn't just a personal virtue, it's a social glue as well. After all that we've discussed, the question remains, is altruism truly selfless? This question has been at the heart of an ongoing debate, a tug of war between two contrasting viewpoints, egoism and altruism. On one side, we have the camp of egoism. They argue that every act, no matter how seemingly selfless, is ultimately driven by self-interest. It could be the warm, fuzzy feeling we get when we help someone, the social recognition we receive, or even the quiet satisfaction of aligning with our moral compass. From this perspective, even altruism is tinged with self-interest. But let's flip the coin and look at the other side. Advocates of altruism argue that true selflessness does exist. They propose that acts of kindness can be conducted with no expectation of reward, no hidden agenda, no self-serving motive. They point to instances where individuals risk their own well-being for the sake of others, sometimes strangers, without any apparent benefit to themselves. These acts, they argue, are the epitome of selflessness. So, who's right? Well, it's not as clear-cut as picking a side. Human behaviour is a complex tapestry, intricately woven with threads of biology, psychology and societal influences. Altruism and egoism may not be mutually exclusive, but rather two sides of the same coin. The motivation behind our actions could be a blend of both, varying in degrees based on the individual and the situation. Perhaps we should move away from trying to categorise actions as purely altruistic or egoistic. Instead, we might consider a spectrum of altruism, where actions fall somewhere between pure selflessness and pure self-interest. This approach acknowledges the multifaceted nature of human behaviour, allowing for a more nuanced understanding of altruism. In the grand scheme of things, does it really matter if altruism is completely selfless or not? After all, if the end result is kindness, compassion and a better world, then does the motive truly taint the action? Perhaps the debate isn't as black and white as it seems. Regardless of the motivations behind it, there's no denying the power of kindness. An act of generosity, a thoughtful gesture or a kind word, these are the threads that weave the fabric of our society. When cast into the sea of human interaction, they ripple out, touching lives and creating waves of positive change. The effects of kindness and altruism are far-reaching, touching both the giver and the receiver. For the individual performing acts of kindness has been shown to increase feelings of happiness, reduce stress and even boost physical health. It's as if our bodies reward us for being kind, releasing chemicals like oxytocin and serotonin, which promote feelings of contentment and well-being. Kindness doesn't just benefit us on a personal level, it also serves as a catalyst for societal change. Think about it. When we witness an act of kindness, we're often inspired to do the same. This phenomenon, known as kindness contagion, has the power to shift societal norms and foster a culture of generosity. The impact of kindness is particularly profound in times of crisis. In the face of adversity, acts of kindness serve as a beacon of hope, reminding us of our shared humanity. They create a sense of community, breaking down barriers and bringing people together.
Moreover, kindness has the ability to transform our perception of the world. It shifts our focus from what's wrong to what's right, from what divides us to what unites us. It reminds us that despite our differences, we're all part of the same human family, capable of compassion and generosity. It's important to remember that kindness doesn't have to be grand or dramatic. It can be as simple as a smile, a listening ear, or a helping hand. It's these small acts of kindness, multiplied by millions of people, that have the power to change the world. Kindness, it seems, is a gift that keeps on giving. Heaps. So, what can we take away from all of this? The intriguing nature of altruism, deeply entrenched in our biology, psychology, and society, shows us the profound significance of kindness. The studies on altruism we discussed reveal how it's not just a noble virtue, but a natural instinct that has evolved with us. From the biological perspective, we saw that altruism might be a survival strategy, hardwired into our genes. The psychological angle showed us the emotional rewards of altruism, the joy and satisfaction derived from helping others. The societal impact of altruism cannot be understated. It fosters community spirit, promotes harmony and even drives progress. We delved into the question of whether altruism is truly selfless and the power of kindness that can transform lives and societies. Whether it's driven by self-interest or not, altruism and kindness undeniably make the world a better place. Perhaps that's all that truly matters.